What is the profile of people who go into Congress? What is their pro? Is there a profile? Like, do you see it's usually somebody that's a former son of a congressman or a congresswoman? It's normally somebody that was, you know, a former lawyer. It's normally somebody that what do you, you're around these guys all the time? They're your colleagues. What is the profile of a former, you know, of a congressperson? You'd be surprised, but a lot of people are there, they're like been involved in politics all their life. They're like staffers. They've been a chief of staff, work in politics. Interesting. And most, a lot of these people that Got actually it. never had a real job. That is a percentage of people. What percentage? You know, that well, never I, had a real job, always uh, worked in politics. I, I didn't really calculate that, but it probably would be roughly half of them. Holy I would say shit. a lot. A lot of people, I mean, I haven't really sat down and Sure, I, I get it, really, yeah. But I know a lot of them. Or like people get involved, they couldn't have a job. And you'd be surprised some of them. I just don't want to really say bad things about it. Like I, got I enough, get it. I got enough enemies, so I don't, you know, I'd rather attack Democrats, but, you know, even among my Republican friends, like some of them, if you read their bio, you know, it's like uh, Sanders was saying, Victoria, they're all complaining about me all life. You would look at everyone else's bio. <laughs> I'm like, well, like, sure. You know, the bias is really not what they sell it to people, right? So a lot of them were unemployed before they got involved to politics. They couldn't have a job. So they become like political consulting or doing stuff on the ground. And then they kind of advance and then they work for the staff as a staffer in the district office and the congressional office and then they like know how to do all these check marks good make sure that all these rating groups you know rate them good let's put name on this bill we'll do this messaging bill they never try to accomplish anything all they want to do and they want to stay there otherwise they're unemployed or maybe stay there for some time and then they will get like a powerful job to be some government relations person and they will make it you know, million dollar a year or, or more. Like some of them make a really lot of money. So I think we have few How? people. You know, they become a government relations because they can sell their political connections then to get good grants and credits for your company. You know, you have connections, you know people from inside, you know how the process works. I mean, few of them are living now with having a very high powerful job with going to pay them a lot. So that's a lot of a step stone for someone who never really had a real job. That's a percentage. There is a percentage there, people that are truly like a passionate people and some like one issue. There are a lot of people that come like a lot of people like from social conservatives with pro-life issues. They're very passionate about that, and they come from kind of a grassroots you know, area. Cause-driven. Cause-driven, but a lot of people, like one-issue people, like, you know, like issues like, and the issues like very narrow, like as long as they care about the issue, whether it's abortion or pro Second Amendment, now that they don't really care about other issues. So it's sometimes very hard to organize and then say, I am also, I'm a strong supporter for Second Amendment. I am a strong pro-life supporter. But if we don't deal with fiscal issues, that's how they bring communists and take our gun Got rights. It. And, but it's very hard sometimes to bring these people into fiscal issues. But where everything is about the money. And that is what Samson, Washington, D.C., what's happening right now, and we are failing as a republic because we have too much corruption with the money. And it's truly, I call it corruption, it's not lightly, but it is not even cronyism. It's a true corruption where politicians figure out that they can buy votes, either Democrats put in all of these NGOs and suppressing poor people, or Republicans giving handouts to a lot of special interest groups that put money in super PACs. And all of them put money in super PACs. So both establishments of the party figure it out how they can get reelected and then brainwash and lie to people. I think people are waking up, but with money you have an ability to sell lies. And that's why if you look at a lot of conservatives and people that you know have common sense, they're afraid to really stand up because there is no money. <laughs> you know, if you are a dependent thinker and, and willing to challenge your party, so a lot of them are afraid to do that. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.